welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And yes, my hair looks a little crazy. I just took my hair down um, earlier. Um, actually, yesterday. I just haven't had a chance to wash it yet because, child, I don't know how I'm still up. <laughs> I worked um, my normal job. I worked like almost a 12 hour shift today. And I still made time to go to a grocery store or whatnot. I still have not had a chance to run. That's clearly not going to happen. And now we're here, though, for another review of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 13, Episode 14. This is called Ashes and Spangs. So um, before we get into this, this was actually really, really good. It was a decent episode. Um, I um, got emotional a couple times, but it's going to be that because we know why we're in Spain. It's because of Sun's um, long-term, long-time friend, um, Merce. And her wanting to release the ashes of Merce. And I apologize ahead of time. The last review, I kept calling him Mercy. I am sorry. I apologize. And after the fact, I actually went on to see who this was. And I was like, oh my gosh, I know who that is actually. And I am so, I, so again, I apologize for not saying his name properly. But now I know who it is. And we're not going to do that again. So there's that. Anyway, so let's get into the review. So we continue the episode where we left off. Um, we saw that Crystal was getting sick on the way to the church. And Anna Marie is there checking on her and um, basically ends up real realizing that this is actually kind of serious and she needs to get going. So um, the thing that was annoying was in the confessional, Anna Marie still kind of made it about her um, instead of putting it aside and just helping her. Um, in, in the confessional. I'm not even going to say what she said because it's just kind of annoying. But she, at least to her face, she was helping her out. And <laughs> I'll get into why I feel a certain way about that in a little bit. Because something else happened um, later on in the episode that was like... Anyway. So then um, the EMTs do arrive. They end up having to call the EMTs. And um, her blood pressure is bad bad like she's almost at stroke level bad it's her blood pressure was like 177 over 88 something ridiculous and so she ends up going to get treated the ladies arrive to the church shortly and it becomes emotional um for mainly sudden um erica is still annoyed that the ladies don't care about her earrings and her getting that victory um that's <laughs> that's kind of a long time it, it's, it becomes a long-term thing, I notice, um, with this episode, that she just still can't let it go that um, the ladies don't see the earring thing as a victory because she's still missing the point that it's your lack of empathy. It doesn't, <laughs> we don't care about the things. And anyway, so um, the rest of the ladies end up kind of, they're, you know, they're praying and stuff in this chapel and um, it's a Catholic, you know, a, a nice little cute Catholic chapel. And it, minus um, Dorit. Dorit's not praying in the church because she's Jewish. And, you know, they she doesn't do that, I'm, I, according to her. And I don't know this because I'm not as familiar with the um, Jewish religion. Um, I guess you, can, you you don't pray in a church. Um, you probably pray in synagogue and set. So that actually makes sense. But anyway. <clears throat> so Kyle and Sutton are having a moment. Um, and she's just kind of just thinking about, son's just thinking about her dad a lot. And Kyle is thinking about her best friend that just passed away. So they're kind of, you know, relying on each other. Um, and they're consoling each other because honestly, them two can kind of really understand the grief because that is a grief that you just really, it's hard to, it's really hard to come to terms when someone's life ends when it's self-inflicted it's it's hard it's hard um because i mean i'm not gonna get into it but i cried a couple times this episode because for those who don't know um i had a cousin who was like a sister to me and actually called me her sister and yeah similar results and it is something that i think about pretty regularly it's it doesn't it doesn't really end so anyway um i don't want to get emotional i'm not gonna do that today in this review but um son does apologize to kyle um 
about she wishes she was a better friend. Um, so they do bury the hatchet and Kyle receives it. And Kyle does say in her confessional that, you know, she wants them to get back to a better space. So she's definitely going to accept the apology and she's glad that she did apologize. Um, I will say this. I would love, I wish Kyle could be mature enough to do the same thing because it wasn't like son just did that out of nowhere. You know, Kyle has some mean girl tendencies, but she don't be apologizing for it. So as much as I love this moment, I just wish accountability would go both ways with that. But for this episode, I, I'm going to just do, I'm going to just leave it there. Like, okay, it's fine. Anyway, um, so the ladies move on and they're on their way to have lunch. But this lunch is kind of cool because they're going to like this um, place outside in the middle of like this beautiful shopping plaza. And um, on their way there, Crystal does FaceTime them while they're in the Sprinter van. And um, we find out that she is on drip. She's doing OK. Um, and they're going to be giving her medication and she will just meet them when they all get home. So she'll she'll come she'll be at the house. So she's she does miss on the, this little trip here, but that's okay. Um, and so they meet the tour guide because the tour guide has to lead them to where the lunch is at because it's kind of in the middle of this plaza. And this tool guy, sorry, tour guide is like literally singing music in Spanish and like has his guitar. And it's like the coolest thing ever. And I just want to be in Spain right now. <laughs> like I, I just, oh my gosh, it was so cool. And um, they do, they get seated for lunch. And um, so while they're all seated for lunch, Anne Marie gets a call from her husband and her kids. And she apparently calls her husband daddy, but only around her kids. The ladies get a good chuckle out of it. I'm looking at like, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Um, I would understand if she was like, your dad, can I see your dad? Why are you calling him daddy? <laughs> You're not, he's not your dad. Um, and then the confessional, Erica being the comedic relief is just like, I've called men daddy, but not, not my husband. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, she's like, you know, when they're hitting that spot just right, <laughs> I personally have never been someone who calls someone daddy because I find that very, um, I don't know. It's giving, um, I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to offend where if you like it, I love it. It's just not for me. We'll just say that. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, Anne-Marie shares her thoughts regarding the argument with Crystal and Crystal's help and. She does make a toast to Crystal, wants her to get healthy and do better. Like, you know, become, get better. And, I mean, pretty much, long story less long, she's, she wants to table the situation because, yeah. Um, Anna Marie, because she does have a medical background, she knows she's not telling the rest of the ladies. I think she's going to leave, leave it for Crystal to say. But it was, it was a pretty severe situation. We find out later on from Crystal that how, what happened. Um, but then Garcelle proceeds to talk about her and Dorit's relationship. So Garcelle sh shares with the group her feelings with Dorit and what occurred at Taco Tuesday. Um, and what she, because now she's finally at the point where she can actually truly articulate what the feeling was. And Dorit does open up and share more with the group about herself and states why she felt so offended by Garcelle's reaction but not in a way where it, it actually was in a good constructive way. This was a good constructive conversation. Well, like it, it was actually probably the first time Dorit was not coming off like bossy and saying, then, you know, the way she talks, she actually was a lot better with her approach this time around where Garcelle and the rest of the group was able to receive. And everyone in turn was also able to receive Garcelle's thoughts and her feelings on everything. And we find out, though, with Dorit that she got picked on all the time for being Jewish and um, a lot of anti-Semitic things would happen to her because she wasn't always, you know, in Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And I, don't, I mean, I don't know if she is now even. I think she's keeping up with the Joneses at this point. But that's neither here nor there. The point is 
she wants to say she she feels away when um garcelle accuses her of being in a bubble because she's like i'm not really in the bubble like that but it's a case of dorit just doesn't know how to keep her foot out of her mouth according to dorit i will let you guys be the judge of it i have my own personal thoughts because i still think you know and i've seen it before just because we're all in some ways a lot of us are minorities you still can say some off things about another minority and still can come off as like a Karen in reference to another minority, especially if your minority level is higher when it comes to like the American dream than another minority. Um, we, we, and that's why there's a lot of, <laughs> that's why a lot of times, like at least with, you know, being in the black community, I personally do not really like being identified as a person of color because my struggles are going to be a little bit different than others in that realm. And I'm sure others have similar thoughts when it comes to their own struggles because everyone's background's different. But that was kind of a little bit, it was a very kid glove version of that conversation that happened at the table. So that was nice. And um, so then um, Sun shares with the ladies that one of her friends, Trevor, along with his friends, um, we'll be at the house later today and they're going to be doing, um, a pie, a pie, um, making cooking class. And, um, Trevor is also from, um, Merce's, um, dance studio. Like they, they met back at Merce's dance studio years and years ago. And so, um, anyway, they're done with lunch <laughs> son's trying to get the ladies to stop going shopping um due to the time but Kyle and Dorit are not having any of it they get they zoom right into the first shopping um so the first shopping store that they saw was open to get back get in there and they got in there and it was actually really really cool because <laughs> uh well before I go into that um Wow, Sun decides to put like a, a three minute timer on them because the way they shop, they'll be there all day, especially Kyle. And so, but they were in this really, really cool fan antique um, shop and the fans were gorgeous. And Dorit ends up buying seven of them and Kyle just ended up buying like most of the store like she always does and all within three minutes. The way I was actually impressed by how much stuff they brought within that time frame. That was wild. And while this was happening, the rest of the ladies went to a jury shop that was right next door and got some jury. Um, so, yeah, that pretty much was it. There. So then they arrived back at the house. Crystal is already there and she's resting and all the ladies check in on her. It turns out that she had really, really high blood pressure and high blood pressure actually does run her family. And um, she was borderline... I, I'm still, I don't understand based off the wordings. I actually rewound it twice to figure it out. I don't know if her blood pressure was so high that she was almost stroking or did she actually have a mini stroke? Either way, <laughs> let's not get twisted. Both are scary and I, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. especially the fact that this is all happening. Let's be mindful here. They're in Spain. They're in a foreign country. And I don't remember or know if Crystal can speak Spanish. So all this is happening. And she wasn't by herself. One of the producers went with her. Because um, originally Anna Marie was actually going to go with her. And, she, and the producer was like, I'll go. So, um, so she wasn't really by herself for real, for real. But, I mean, mini stroke. A stroke period, that's no bueno. And considering the fact that Crystal is literally my age, we're the same age. We're in the same age group. To be in your early 40s, which, sorry, or, or close to your 40s, late 30s, early 40s, having a stroke or being close to having a stroke, I can't imagine, especially in this day and age. For those who know, honey, 40s is a new 30s. I don't know if y'all know that, but like, come on now. The skin be skinning. So y'all already know. Y'all already know. I just wanted to say that. But anyway, so it was super scary. And she does get super emotional. 
And long story less long, she's on medication. She needs to relax. She can't drink because she's on high blood pressure medication. And they need time for that to get in her system and do what it needs to do. And so then after this, the ladies get glammed up for the evening for the paella uh, making content. Con wow. Paella making class. Um, Crystal does talk to her husband, share what happened there. And Kyle and Mo talk on FaceTime too. But Mo's, Mo's um, FaceTime wasn't working. Mysteriously. And then stacky and then disconnect. It was weird. Um, and then also, um, son is, um, trying to get the ladies round up to get there on time. Crit, um, <laughs> Erica's getting glammed up and plotting. She is plotting because she's still not over these damn earrings. She's not. And, but she does also recap with her glam about the events that happened for the day. And also Erica's already drunk and we already know drunk Erica is no bueno. I mean, that's pretty much all last season was Erica being drunk and she was not bearable. So she already said that that's what's happening. But anyway, Trevor and her, his friends arrive and so many different people and cool people. And, um, and then also they right away, besides of course, mean son right away, they meet Dorit and Erica who is clearly Liddy and both son and Dorit can tell they're like, Oh Lord, she is gone with the wind. Okay, so the rest of the ladies actually arrive and Garcelle and Crystal proceed to go to the Paeta um, cooking class. It's all outside, by the way. I'm um, just outside of um, their um, Airbnb that they're at. And Sean, Garcelle and Crystal meet Storm's daddy. Because <laughs> apparently he is the head chef, which led Storm to become a chef. And... I don't know if I mentioned in the last review or not. I probably should have mentioned it. Storm clearly is in his 20s. He's young. He's too young for even, like, I wouldn't do that. Like, he's too young for me. So even though they're flirting with her, flirting with him last episode, I was kind of like, I don't know. I For me, I, I get men do it all the time, but it's just not for me. But anyway, but the daddy was zadding. The dad was more my speed. I ain't gonna lie. Because his dad, the dad looked like he was maybe in his late 40s, early 50s. <laughs> and considering Garcelle's age, and I'm not trying to be an ageist or anything like that, uh, but like, oh yeah. <laughs> and he actually looked good, so I, 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 I get it. We, we see each other. And um, anyway, she wants a daddy now. <laughs> She's like, ooh. I could be Storm's stepmom. Like, she just kept joking about the whole entire time. And, um, I mean, let's not get twisted. Both Crystal and Sun were looking at him, too, like, ooh, he fine. Because, I mean, he did look good. And, um, <laughs> also one of Trevor's friends was also like, ooh. And <laughs> Garcelle was joking, like, Tripper. <laughs> it, was, it was cute. It was, it was funny. It was funny. It was a nice comedic relief for the episode um actually there's a lot there's quite a few fun funny moments in this episode but anyway so crystal and garcelle they actually go to the side and start having a conversation and um crystal asks about like oh i heard you and dorit had a conversation and she just states yeah it went really well the group was receiving it well so it was perfect and side note i am loving and i hope this stays this way i love that garcelle and crystal um, have kind of gotten past that weirdness that they had the last couple of seasons, along with Crystal and um, Sudden getting to a better place. I love it. I love it. I'm just going to say that. Hopefully it stays because I do like this dynamic. I actually like the dynamic of the whole group as, as overall because of how it's so much better than it was before. It just is. <laughs> Um, now I know a lot of people who are watching the show don't think is as good or just think this is kind of a snooze fest of a season. I personally enjoy the season because it's just a lot more lighter. There's a lot more fun moments. Um, there's different dynamics that would not have been able to coexist if certain people were still on the show. 
So I'm enjoying it. But anyway, I got sidetracked there. So while this is happening, Dorit, Erica, and Anne Marie um, are talking, and Erica gives Anne Marie kudos for for um, basically putting her differences aside and helping Crystal out. And I wrote, I wrote that um, she's giving her kudos for doing her job. I'm sorry. I want like <sighs> she takes a medical oath. To help those who are in need. It is literally her job. If she sees an emergency. She has to do something about it. So I personally just like. Feel a way that we're. Giving rewards for doing your job. Like okay. So I'm supposed to give like. Kudos for expectations met. I mean. I'm pretty sure there's. A, there's doctors who don't really love their patients. But that's your obligation. It's obligation. So, I found that comment weird, but anyway, um, I guess I guess it it is what it is there. But Crystal on the other side mentions that she does want to try to resolve things with Anna Marie because she's also doing the same thing a little bit, um, giving her credit for helping her out. Which Chris, I don't agree with that all the way, but I understand why Crystal will feel that way because Crystal literally felt like she. I mean, she could have died. She really could have. Because a stroke is serious, no matter if it's a mini stroke or major stroke or any time when your blood pressure gets out of whack and you are somewhere where you can't really do anything about it, that can be deadly. So I get why she wants to, you know, move forward and try to go a different direction. So, I mean, that's pretty much what's happening here, according, but this is more of what Crystal had to say there. But anyway, so then Garcelle goes back to flirting with the dad and the food is ready. <laughs> and the guy and the dad, I didn't write his name, but he's like, the food is ready and he gone. Because Quise has kept the way the ladies are goo goo guy goo guying over this the, the two men, they do actually kind of look uncomfortable, so they like left. <laughs> so even though it's funny, I'm kind of like, watch it. <laughs> because let's be real here. We can't double standard. We can't be double standard about this. If this was on the other hand, we would give it. We, it would be kind of borderline cringe. And it's not quite that just because I feel like Garcelle's not being serious. But if they don't know that you're not being serious, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it alone there. So, um, um, Merce is there with the rest of the crew in an ice box. And they are um, sit they're seated for dinner. And Dorit asked Trevor about Sutton and how she was in her 20s when they met. And it's cute because he's lightly shading her, but totally not being serious. And, um, you know, Trevor mentions that she lived in Brooklyn. And then this is where the shenanigan starts with Erica. And... The rest of the ladies and the guests got a kick out of it, but Sutton clearly didn't. And I don't know if it's going to get addressed later on or not. Because I ain't going to lie, as much as I found it, I would have probably felt way if I was Sutton. I was kind of cracking up because it was kind of funny. <laughs> so I know where Erica's like, oh, Brooklyn, what a dump. Like, <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with this lady? And everyone's just looking at her shocked, like, oh my gosh. And then Sutton goes in her confessional. So as this is happening, because no one's taking her seriously. They're just kind of moving along in the conversation as Erica keeps doing this. Um, Sutton in her confessional does actually explain what it was like when she moved to Brooklyn. She was in her 20s, didn't have any money, didn't, she wasn't how she is today. And she just kind of did it to get an opportunity because, you know, she's originally from Georgia. She's a Southern girl. And... She packed our things and moved to New York and to, you know, to pursue dancing, which is awesome. <laughs> it's such a cool story. Um, but anyway, so while this is happening, though, I already mentioned Erica's being ridiculous the whole time. She makes a con So because someone asked if um, Sutton knew Christian, her ex-husband at this time. Um, and she said, yeah, I've known him since I was 14. And she's like, ah, 14, yikes. <laughs> Someone else from the group, 
from the group, not the ladies, are just looking at her like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and then Erica then proceeds to mention that Merce was in a Ziploc bag when all the ladies met him. Because, you know, Sutton was trying to make sure she got the ashes to Barcelona safely without TSA, you know, having problems with it because a powdery substance randomly in something, I don't know. That could be an issue. Yes, you can say it's ashes, but you don't want like someone from TSA to be going through or customs going through, you know, your loved one's ashes. So she put in a Ziploc bag. She figured it would be the safest. She just forgot to take. She probably should have taken it out and put in something else before she had the ladies introduced because now Erica's throwing it in her face in front of everyone. And then <laughs> um, as kind of a rebut, um, and I don't know how this is going to land later on. Um, Sutton's like, I mean, Kyle has her mom in the bathroom. And Kyle's like, I mean, I didn't know where else to put it. I was afraid that I would, you know, drop it somewhere. So I put it in the guest bathroom and it's really pretty. And we see in the confessional it actually was beautifully done. And I guess for me, because I've never been someone who has ashes, I don't know where you would put that at either. Like, it's the fear of the ashes getting all over the place. I just, I don't know. So anyway, they kind of brush it over. And also the ladies are also like in shock as all this happens. But everyone could tell at this point. I, I would think at this point everyone could tell that Erica's gone. She's, she, the libations are livating with her. Okay, so then, as again, they kind of brushed over, the ladies continue to conversate with all of the guests, and everyone has such interesting stories. Like, this would be a table I would just love to be a part of. You know, there's people from all over the world just at this table, and it was so cool, so dope. Like, just all these people talking about their background. Um, there was an architect who was there who's um, built some beautiful buildings throughout Spain. There is a lady from Philly and she was like, I'm on my Beanie Seagull. Um, there was a lady who like has moved throughout the world. It was just crazy. Just so many different people. And as this is happening, Erica's actually conversing with all these people too. But she goes from being like drunkenly, obnoxiously drunk to becoming like Rain Man. And knowing everything of what they're talking about these world travelers and being able to have the exact same conversations with them as if like she was there with them. And everyone's just looking at Erica, like what is going on? And in Erica's confessional. She states like, because of Tom and the people that he dealt with, I literally would talk to people like this all the time and just learn things, have information. And she, you know, she shares, she doesn't have a college education. She only has a high school education. And as a result, she likes to just gain knowledge from people, from talking to people. And we saw this in the episode where they got to Spain that she literally has a freaking ridiculously amazingly good memory. So you could tell whenever she has information, she's truly listening. It sticks. It doesn't go away. And it, it was amazing. Like even I was shocked. Like, Wow. She knows so much random cool stuff. Like it was, it was blowing me away. And she's gone, by the way. She's still lit. Like it's not like she sobered up. <laughs> she just became like drunk Rain Man, according to Dorit. And that was a very accurate way of saying it. But anyway, they do end up toasting to Merce, who is in the purse. <laughs> As Erica says, Merce in the purse. <laughs> um, but it seemed to be just like a fun evening, a fun dinner. The ladies are having a good time. The guests end up having a good time. And then the ladies kind of leave, you know, one by one to kind of do their own thing in the house while the guests are still trying, like, slowly sashaying away. And um, Trevor and Son do have a moment. And he's, like, saying, I remember you when you were just, like, in your 20s. You were scared, so insecure. He's, like, it's good to see that you're growing into being a woman. You have, you have a little bit more self-confidence than what you've had before. So... That was beautiful, and that's kind of how that ends. It's the next morning, and <laughs> Erica feels like hell. Um, Garcelle is helping um, 
Crystal with taking her blood pressure medicine. And we find out that Garcelle also has high blood pressure and kind of shares like, hey, if you have it, you have to like keep an eye on it at all times because it, it could kill you. And that is a fact. You, I guess a lot of times we don't think about it because I just I know so many people have high blood pressure. And I guess I just never thought about it that way because I personally don't have it. But yeah, it's something you have to keep an eye on at all times. And so and but considering how young Crystal is, that's crazy. And um, Crystal was also kind of just looking, hoping it will go much further down this like super quickly. But it was just like, it's only been a day. Like, you got to give it some time. And um, they recapped the air cut at all. And they know that Sutton really didn't like it, but they were all like, that was funny because it, it was. <laughs> and then while this is here, th while this is happening, Sutton is in Kyle's room telling her the plans for the ceremony for releasing um, Merce's ashes. And she actually ended up getting some Spanish flowers or like a necklace um, for the rest of the ladies to release if they have anything they want to release um, that they're internalizing or whatever it is. And then while this is happening, Dorit is getting glammed up and talking to her children um, as she gets ready. And she complains about um, PK again because PK is away too in London. And she was just hoping that PK could have make some time to just be there while she's not there because Dorit hardly ever leaves like her kids. And she just wishes like, you know, there would be more of an effort there. Which I kind of figured that this was going to continue because that was weird that one episode she thought this was all fixed. <laughs> so yeah, anyway. Sun is getting um, emotional. So as this is happening and Sun's pretty much dressed up and ready to go, Sutton actually gets super emotional right before the ceremony and she doesn't want to do it. She wants to back out and not do it because we find out that these ashes mean way more to her than we could ever imagine. Like it's not just Merce's ashes. Um, her dad had ashes when he, he was cremated. And so it symbolizes her dad, the death of like her dad symbolizes the death of her marriage and like her life changing. And Apparently, she's just been internalizing a lot, and she shares with Kyle that she really feels alone. So, when that last episode, when Gar when Sun mentioned to Anna Marie how she felt a way about you know her saying that she's lonely, and she felt a way because she feels that way, like actually. So, she does say at the end that she has to be that twenty two year old girl who moved to New York again and child that's life it bees like that like all the different incarnations of life you just you, you just have to push through at times and I I felt sudden in that I definitely did because I've had so many times where I feel like I had to just start over like I don't know how many times I felt like I feel like starting over is like a thing for me like but Maybe I'm okay with it because it's the Aries in me and we like new beginnings. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, that does conclude the episode. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.